It's the new year and it seems like everyone can't stop talking about sugar. I'm joined in studio by Dr. Darren mm. Green and he's going to give us a little sugar 101. Hello. <laughs> Hello there. Now everyone's talking about sugar because I think everyone's trying to lose weight. It's the new year. New Correct. year, new you. Correct. Okay? Correct. So what's the big deal? Why is sugar all of a sudden enemy number one? I think a lot of people are trying to turn over new forest after having a, a bit of a rebellious festive season. So weight management obviously is the main, main motivation. It shouldn't be, but it is. There is a strong association of sugar consumption and large amounts of it with the epidemic of obesity. Mm -hmm. And with that comes obviously the full metabolic syndrome as we know it, uh, with dyslipidemia, which is your cholesterol issues, your high blood pressure, your increased uric acid levels, etc., etc. So, those all those lifestyle diseases are associated with each other. Your you, you having one of them leads to your chances increasing of developing one of the other. Sugar specifically is coming to the limelight because of big uh, research studies that have now come forward showing that sugar addiction is not just a thing of the mind, it's actually real. It's so like a drug addiction. It is like a drug addiction and no one willfully becomes addicted to anything. Take gambling for example. No one willfully decides I want to uh, lose my entire month's pension as a 70 year old yeah. and start gambling. So when it comes to any addiction basically it's just curiosity that, that gets you involved initially looking at that beautiful icing sugar coated cupcake for example that's gorgeous on the outside means you just want to taste it mm, i want to taste you it you want to taste it <laughs> and then we get stuck into it and then you like what you taste and it rewards you for you know that curiosity mm. and then you become so addicted to the reward uh, that you experience of that taste now obviously it would depend what your exposure has been to from the time you're born even from the time you conceived uh, and what you even got in your breast milk it's very interesting to look at uh, whether your mom or, or mom basically <laughs> had lots of sugar really? while she was expecting. So you can imagine the amount of sugar available in the bloodstream that's transferred from mom to baby. In breast milk, for example, the, the, the different foodstuffs and tastes that get transferred across. Uh, the same applies to obviously with alcohol during breastfeeding. So developing a sweet tooth is an interesting topic in itself. Looking at which taste buds are developed to certain mm. food types. And obviously exposure and experience and environment all play a role with that. But certainly there does seem to be quite a large genetic component as well to people that have sweet tooths quite often. Mm. Uh, the issue obviously is just what you do with that sweet tooth. So moderation for example. Someone could buy a, 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 boil, a big box of these chocolate balls, uh, these Swiss chocolate balls. That sounds delicious. And some people can eat two or three and they reach the threshold. Other people can consume 20. Those are the addicts. And, and then they can still keep going. They don't have a switch, uh, you know, an off switch yeah. for something being too sweet for them. And it's very interesting to, to realize what the health uh, ramifications of having too much sugar is. So we, it all comes down to an energy equation. Your body requires energy in different forms obviously to carry out its normal function each cell whether it's a muscle cell a brain cell mm. you know a skin cell it needs energy and it needs nutrients to function now different foodstuffs supply that energy whether it be fat in large amounts energy is concealed in fats fats for example have a, a very high packaged uh, form of energy even higher than for example carbohydrates yeah. proteins etc so as those things are digested and acted, acted upon in the human body by enzymes, they get broken down into simple molecules of energy that are then absorbed uh, and utilized to provide energy to the individual cells. What people don't realize is that sugar, for example, and, uh, and, and other sources of energy is stored as fat. So if you are consuming large amounts of energy and you are not burning what you're taking in, there's going to be a surplus of energy that needs to go somewhere, you know, based on... Where does it go? Does it just stay there? It gets stored under the skin in a yeah. fat layer called adipose, or it's stored in the liver as well. Mm -hmm. So the muscle cells, you know, under the skin, the adipose tissue the, in the liver itself, you get fatty congestion and so on. So that's why the balance is essential, energy in, energy out. So if you are eating and consuming too much of an energy source, and in this case sugar, to what your physical requirements are, how much you're burning every day, you're going to pick up weight. If you change that ratio, you're going to lose weight automatically. But sugar specifically, obviously, is controlled by, by special 
uh, hormones in the body that we know of called insulin. So the control of sugar in the bloodstream and how much is available to use for emergency energy situations is regulated by this hormone called insulin, which comes from the pancreas. Mm. So you can imagine diabetes, for example, type 1 diabetes is where your body, uh, your pancreas is either injured, uh, autoimmune basis or post-infection, and it doesn't manufacture insulin. Mm. And we have type 2, which is the metabolic syndrome, and that kind of diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is where your, your insulin is actually made, but you, you have decreased sensitivity to it or insulin resistance, where your body doesn't respond to you know, the receptor coherence. It's not, it's not effective in controlling the blood sugar levels, which then soar. And when you have these high blood sugar levels, they cause damage, they wreak havoc to the inner lining of the blood vessels throughout the human body, in the brain, the heart vessels, etc., even the vessels that lead to the skin and the nerves. And then the blood supply to those different vital organs is compromised, giving you what we call the complications of diabetes.